Hello, this is Dan. And Phil. Oh, you like right, Dan? Chocolate Ring. You are listening to BBC Radio 1, where for the next hour, some of the biggest stars of the internet take control of your radio. Oh, Charlie! I am Charlie McDonald. Ah! My name's Jack Howard. And I'm Dean Dobbs. It's a Leo Blue Dan, Charlie. Hello, everyone. Is this thing on? This is the Internet Takeover. <laughs> Fallout Boy, Irresistible, <laughs> and you are now listening to and watching Dan and Phil. One, BBC Radio One. Hello, everybody. Hello. It is the first Monday of the month at 9 pm, which means it is the internet takeover with Dan and Phil on Radio One. We will be in control of what happens on the airways for the next hour, and you have to forgive us because. Phil has laryngitis this week. That makes me sound like I'm dying. I've, I've just <laughs> lost my voice. It's not that bad. It does sound a bit like a terminal illness. Well, it's just basically like a cold in your throat, isn't it? Yeah. So I think you sound really husky and sensual. I do. It's like I've been bitten by a Barry White werewolf. <laughs> the Barry White bug. And I can only do really deep voices, but anything above that just gets cut off completely. We have a little clip here of your vocal range from a couple of shows ago. So I'd okay. like just to remind ourselves of that. It's just a beautiful sound. Oh. <laughs> I mean, you know, that was just serene as it was. But Phil, would you like to give us an example of what that sounds like today? Oh, no. Just okay. Go for it. I'll start off deep. That's it. That's as What happened in the middle there? I don't know. <laughs> Did it just stop working? I could work for a strange phone line, couldn't I? You, yep, you could. People let's, would pay two pounds a minute. Let's move on. Uh, I'll handle what's happening in the show. In 15 minutes, we're going to be telling you all the weirdest stuff that's happened around the world in internet news. Because it is Revision Week on Radio 1, we're going to be giving you some tips on what not to do when revising. And of course, we'll be doing the seven second challenge. Also, you can watch us live at bbc.co.uk forward slash Radio 1. If you've never seen our faces before, you'll know what we look like. Dan yeah. is actually half koala. But which half? Come on the radio and website to find out with your own eyes. Okay. And now we have a new track from Jamie XX, who just frankly makes really good music all the time. This is featuring his bandmate Romy. This is Loud Places on BBC Radio 1.
That was Loud Places by Jamie XX. So, Phil, it was just a, a seasonal day yesterday, wasn't it? It was Easter, which means today is Easter Boxing Day. Happy Easter Boxing Day, everybody, from the Gravelly Phil. Yeah. What a wonderful thing. So we had quite a good weekend. We made some uh, extreme triple-layered Easter nests. They were so extreme. With a pound of butter, <laughs> and my intestines are really, really regretting it. I it still like, feel kind of sick. It was one of those things where they were just there, and yeah. even though we could have spaced them out, for maybe several days in the fridge, I ended up eating four in one evening. If there's something right there, you've just got to eat all of them at once. I think that a human body isn't designed to process that much golden syrup in no, 24 hours. I don't and think I so. had the repercussions of that, so that was my Easter. Yeah, I felt shunned by the Easter bunny. I didn't get one egg. <laughs> Nothing in my bedroom in the morning. Are you a believer of the uh, Easter Bunny being a physical deliverer of eggs in the house, well, are you? if my parents tell me there's a rabbit that's entering the house in the middle of the night as a child, I'm going to believe it. The Easter Bunny is a scary concept. I mean, yeah. firstly, like, why, why a bunny? I guess it's just like a, a nice fluffy animal. I guess. But the idea that mostly in costumes it's a big six foot thing. Well, you don't need a six foot rabbit that just delivers eggs to children, do you? Have you seen those pictures on Facebook of Easter bunnies from like the 60s? From like the 50s, yes. They are terrifying. Actually, don't Google like old Easter bunny. You'll just have nightmares for ages. Yeah. <laughs> this got me thinking though. I think we need more mascots for different holidays. I mean, we've got the Easter bunny, but other holidays need a mascot. Oh, what you mean like Ross and the, what was it? the? The holiday armadillo? Yeah, we yeah. could have like the New Year's otter. The New Year's otter? It would crawl out of your toilet and then give you a shiny stone of luck. Okay, firstly, I think that would prevent me from ever going to the <laughs> toilet ever again. Uh, what would be the purpose of the stone? Uh, it'd just make you lucky. Like, if you got oh, the stone, just a lucky stone. You'd, you'd feel lucky. So you're all for the New Year's Otter, are yeah. you? Okay. I would like you to let us know some as well. So tweet us with hashtag new holiday mascot oh, okay this is the thing yeah tell us making new holiday mascots right tell us what your mascot is mm -hmm. what's the holiday and what's its <laughs> special power what does it do like the new year's otter yeah oh, the holiday armadillo okay i like that idea so tweet us with hashtag new holiday mascot with what that is and describe it and we will read some of those out throughout the show yeah anyway we cracked out a dancing game the other day and we i did. attempted beyonce you did some good beyonce dancing i was impressed by your i looked yeah. like a giraffe on an ice rink so i thought <laughs> Because I defiled her song so much, we should play some Beyonce now. So here is Crazy in Love. Get bbc.co.uk slash Radio 1 now to watch the Dan and Phil show on Radio 1. That was Beyonce with Crazy in Love. Hopefully she's forgiven me now for my terrible dancing. I'm sure she has. So we are asking you at Phil's request to come up with new holiday mascots today because you just, what, you thought that the Easter Bunny was too unexplainable? Yeah, I tell you what, Santa is now sweating because we're getting so many it's good gonna ones. It's going to get bumped off. We've got one here from Molly who said, a bank holiday cat which gives you money because it's a bank holiday. I'd, I'm like, I'd, I'd be down with that. It's like one of those Japanese lucky cats you just like yeah. throws coins at you. It's better than a money that. spider. My uncle used to press like money spiders and go, here you go, you're going to get some money now. But Sounds like, oh. like I would hate your granddad. Uh, Anna said, a lobster on the queen's birthday that comes and bites you. <laughs> well, just, just to remind you that you should love the queen. <laughs> Respect the queen, nibble. Okay, that's fine. Maybe a name would be good for that one. And then Marissa just said, your mum. Always oh, appreciated. It doesn't have one. to be animals, though, guys. You can think outside the box, but that's a good start. Hashtag new holiday mascot. We'll be reading out more of those throughout the show. Yeah, and now it's time to see what those handsome chaps in the news story studio are getting up to <laughs> in this week's Internet News. This is the Internet News. Internet news. The big April Fool story this year was, of course, Google adding Pac-Man to their service Maps. If you haven't seen this, all you have to do is go to Maps, find an area that you want to play the game, click on the little Pac-Man symbol, and it will literally turn the streets into a game of Pac-Man with the original music. I felt so powerful doing this. I thought I could eat taxis and eat humans. Of course, I knew it would turn into some kind of weird cannibalization simulator, but it didn't really work in the UK. I mean, you go to American roads and it works yeah. really well because it's all straight lines, but you go to the UK and it's just like, what a roundabout? What do I do? Do you know what Americans call roundabouts? What? Traffic circles. No, they don't. Some of them do. Traffic circles. They do. I've never heard of a traffic circle in my life. It's called a roundabout, mate. Bucket Internet list. news. <laughs> Have you ever overindulged in chocolate this Easter? 
If you have, then you might not want to hear the next story. Mm -hmm. A cafe in Manchester has created an Easter feast breakfast challenge that incorporates a massive 4,000 <laughs> calories. How is that possible? Owner Ollie Taylor has added the meal to his menu, which consists of two types of cereal, half an Easter egg, brownies, marshmallows, small chocolate eggs, topped off with three kinds of flavoured milk. Okay, we have a picture of it here. Wow. Whoa. I mean, how do, you, how do you feel about that? It's like my dream meal. I don't know. I feel like the cream egg is just one step too far. I, I don't think I'd like that at all. I would dive face first into that. Of course you would. How was your Easter chocolate? eating session? Uh, well, we made uh, Easter nests with yeah. an entire pound of butter and my intestines are regretting it immensely. So that was my Easter fun. This Thanks year. for that information. Mm -hmm. Internet news. Now, of course, we all know that selfie sticks are dangerous for your social life, but did you know that they could be dangerous for you physically as well? What? Well, a video has surfaced of a snowboarder just filming a little bit of him going down a mountain on a selfie stick when he got distracted and got hit in the head by a chairlift. Ouch. I have a little video of it here. So you can see the man just looking at his friend. Staring at the thing. Okay. And then, oh, what, what's that coming up behind oh, him? No, look behind Three, you. Two, one, no, bam! Oh. That was a real <laughs> nasty impact for everybody listening on the radio. Thank God that there was a load of snow underneath him. So, yeah, maybe we can just show that video to lots of people and maybe get it banned or something. I haven't yeah, dabbled in a selfie stick yet. Why Why not? I, I haven't even touched one. They're pretty pointless, aren't they? Yeah. I mean, like, you have arms. What, what's wrong with an arm being in the photo as opposed to a giant metal pole? <laughs> they should invent one that looks like an actual stick from a tree. Or one that looks like a human arm. Yeah. But then why would you be carrying around like another arm to put pointless invention? <laughs> and there we go. Don't get arrested. That was the internet news. The internet news. Thanks, Dan and Phil. Thanks. An example that the BBC cloning tanks are now perfectly ready and safe to use. They're just ready for Cumberbatch as soon yeah. as the time comes. And now it is time for Dan's obligatory monthly Stanier moment on the radio. It'd be weird if you didn't do it. <laughs> Frankly, at this point, here is All Day.
That was Kanye with All Day. Did you know that's actually Paul McCartney at the end there doing a little strum, strummy whistly oh, thing? Really? He's just shoehorned into every track on this upcoming album, isn't he? He's actually in the studio right now. That's that, that's not true. I'd be hyperventilating if that was true. Anyway, <laughs> Phil, how is your voice holding up, we've you actually, poor victim? We've had the creator of The Simpsons on the phone that wants me to replace Marge Simpson. Really? Oh, okay. So do do a good Marge impression. Oh, me. <laughs> sorry, oh sorry, sorry, what? I didn't but even make it, a sound then. actually produced a noise Wait. for us to, okay. Oh, oh me. Okay. That, that was, was terrible. That was really sad. I should never do that again. <laughs> In other news, okay, so we've had some new holiday mascots. We have indeed. Alex said there should be a Christmas Kanye who walks around telling people that they're not good at singing Christmas carols. <laughs> I'm going to let you finish, but no. I like Christmas carols. I disagree with that one. That'd be pretty good. A fan drone said there should be a Valentine's goose that attacks all disgusting couples. <laughs> stop, stop publicly displaying your honk as it pecks at them violently. That, that wow. would ruin the moment slightly if that a goose just honked at you. And they would ruin any moment. Matt said there should be an International Women's Day owl <laughs> who what? arrives and drops books on feminism on your desk. That'd be so useful. <laughs> That would. There should be owls for all kinds of literature. Um, Rosie said a bonfire night dragon that lights all the bonfires with one breath and magics up toffee apples. Oh my god. He might get a bit hungry and eat everyone at the bonfire. Yeah, I think that sounds like a. I mean, would you. An owl can't really do that much damage, but a dragon, they might. Oh, and Amy said she would just like a fill for every day of the year. Oh, Aww, is that is that nice or creepy? I feel a lot of pressure for every day of the year. It's a little would bit you, Would you have something to celebrate every day of the year? What would I do? I don't know. What are your party tricks? Um, not doing a Marge Simpson impression, not apparently. <laughs> yeah, that's the one thing that you should definitely avoid. Now, it is time for a live lounge performance from Circa Waves. Everyone was loving this in the YouTube comments, they by were. the way. Chodoloddle said, OMG... <laughs> That's that just most YouTube comments when they're happy about stuff, isn't it? As you fucking... Yeah. Try and actually pronounce that one, though. Og me disk That's how much she liked That's it. That's how good this song is, people. You're in for a treat. Here is their cover of Ellie Golding's Love Me Like You Do. Brilliant. Circle Waves in the live lounge. Love Me Like You Do. If you want to check that out again, you can look on the BBC iPlayer channel. The Radio 1 one. Not just like the... BBC Four One. Yes. Might get some good documentaries in that. Dan and Phil. <laughs> BBC Radio One. So it is revision week on Radio One at the moment, and we were asked if we wanted to make a little helpful video for people. So here is a little something that we made earlier. I hope it expands your minds. Make sure you're watching on the Radio One website. So Phil, we're not at school anymore. How do you feel about that? Like I've escaped from prison. I never have to read a geography <laughs> textbook ever again. Woohoo! Photos were quite pretty though. Well, lots of people still are, and they are about to head into exam season. Dun, dun, dun. All this week on Radio 1, people have been giving all kinds of helpful advice on how to deal with the fear and the fog and the cram to do with studying. So I thought what we could do is say all of the things that you should definitely not do. I think we'll be good at that. Force yourself to sit at a desk in your bedroom. Yep, confine yourself to one small room that you can permanently associate with stress and always alone. Just read textbooks until your brain starts to dribble out of your ears. Stick to the single most boring and useless form of learning by just staring at walls of text. Work non-stop all day and night. Study and only study from the moment you wake up to the moment you sleep. Except without sleeping. Always have your favourite distractions easily accessible. Internet access, your phone, TV, your favourite music. Always have it at hand, ready to distract you at a moment's notice. Release a herd of goats into your house. Wait, what? Well, they'd eat all your notes and poop everywhere. That'd be a bad thing to do. That's not going in the revision list. But they are good at algebra, though. Algebra. Oh my god. Suffer alone. Carry all the stress of studying by yourself with no sympathy or advice from others. And finally, leave everything till the last minute. Yep, even if you have weeks of free time, just do whatever you want, whenever you want, and leave all the studying until the night before the exam. And there we go, that is what not to do when revising. Wait, is this helpful? Probably not in any way, but maybe if someone rewatches this whole thing and does the opposite of what we say, it'll be some good advice for surviving the exam season. Have fun! You can try and reverse that, but if you want some actual helpful advice, go to the Radio 1 website and there's a big revision box. Are you saying that watching that entire video and making all the advice backwards is not a good idea? Well, I think the goat advice was pretty sound. <laughs> what, the but... algebra? Yeah, God, I mean, that was, I can't believe I walked right into that pun, <laughs> Phil. I'm actually ashamed of you. Now, here is the latest single from what is probably the best album that is going to come out this year. Just putting that out there. What about Kanye, Dan? Are you cheating on Kanye West right now? <laughs> okay, well, I mean, honestly, I feel very scared and embarrassed embarrassed for anyone that's going to have to release an album after this. I'm talking about Kendrick Lamar and here is his new song, King Kunta, on Radio 1.
Kendrick Lamar on Radio 1. So I had quite a uh, epiphany for the hashtag New Holiday Mascot during that one. Yeah. Based on your terrible algebra pun. Algebra. The revision goat who turns up and makes terrible facepalm-worthy puns to <laughs> ease the stress of revision. I'd like a little there revision we go. goat. That was like double topical there for me. I like yeah, that. that. That's a good one. Uh, Summer Harry 96 said, a crocodile that gives you a high five when you buy new shoes. <laughs> it's the Crocs Croc. Unless you bought <laughs> actual leather crocodile shoes. Then it would eat you it would, and cry a silent tear. It would rip your face off. <laughs> um, Owl Clifford said, a tortoise that is sent on your birthday that gives you free Wi-Fi so you can survive anywhere in the world. <laughs> The, the Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi tortoise. I, like, that's that's a good example of the why the animal one. It's just like it could be anything. Yeah. <laughs> why the Wi-Fi tortoise? Okay. MG Howell, Howell wants uh-huh. 4th of July Steve Buscemi inspired fireworks. <laughs> that's so <laughs> just, specific. I'm sure someone could do that. Surely there's some chemist out there that could put the right amount of powder in and then you go, boom, giant Buscemi face that, that in the sky. A lovely face in the sky. This one's loaded in with a good nature fact as well. Okay. Uh, Cleo said that there should be pandas for April Fools because a group of pandas are are called an embarrassment. Is that a fact? Did you not know that? I didn't know that. I feel like every day there's new animal facts that I am wowed by. Like, was it a, a murder a of murder crows? crows. Yeah. Do you know the people that come up with those names? Must be a fun group of people. <laughs> they must have just got really bored at some point. It's like, oh, we'll put, like murder of cr- an embarrassment of pandas. I mean, please I, explain that. I love it. I want to be their friends. The friends of the people that do all the pandas. Yeah, so keep those coming in. Hashtag new what was it? Holiday new, mascot. New, new holiday. It was, it was your idea. Phil. It was my idea. I know that's the okay. Blame the illness. What's the next song, Phil? We have something from Phil's 2004 mix CD. Oh, nice. It's the killers back when they were babies, so they'd only done a little bit of killing. <laughs> oh, just a little bit. <laughs> See what he did there. Okay. It's Somebody Told Me. The Killers, somebody told me. That was a really husky Killers then, wasn't it? The Killers! The Killers! Phil has laryngitis. It's not just like a really strange hiring choice for BBC. I am trying to keep the deep area of my voice. Just stay in the low The Killers. Things will sound okay. We've had some more holiday mascots. Uh Uh-huh. Kara wants an April Fool's puppy that walks up cutely and then eats your face. Ha, <laughs> prank, you don't have a face. Um, yeah, that's that's quite graphic. Okay, yeah. thanks for that one. They're getting quite angry. Yeah. Lucy <laughs> says, National Typo Day with Dan Howell that's as just, the mascot. That's just unnecessary. <laughs> Nicer internet people, come on. How's going. your resolution of no typos going? Uh, failing absolutely miserably. Okay, so moving on, it is time for us to play a game. A very intense game. You could in fact say that this is the most intense per second radio feature ever created. The seven second challenge. See, that's what I sound like when I don't have laryngitis. That's what Phil sounds like when he's healthy. Really slow. (laughs) Um, So you've lost three games in a row. Have I won the seven second challenge in 2015? I don't don't think I've won this entire year, have I? You need to pick up the game. This crown is growing around my skull. It's because you're the inventor. You get like some weird God mode cheat on it. So for anyone who doesn't know, the premise is fairly simple. You have seven seconds to do whatever the other person says. And it is sudden death. The first person to fail loses, and the winner gets to play some kind of strange wild card song of their choice. I've been sitting on mine for a while, obviously. Yeah. I'm really quite desperate to play it. Phil, uh, you've just been running through. Surely you've run out of quirky songs that you like by now. I've got a really good one today, so I hope I win. Okay. Yeah. Are you ready, Phil? I'm so ready. I'm going to give you a challenge first. Do I have to move or anything? Uh, no, you'll find out. Okay. I don't think so. So, Phil, three, two, one. Come up with a motto for the New Year's Otter. The New Year's Otter, he'll give you some luck, and if you stroke him on the nose, it'll be a great day. Oh my god, that was terrible. I thought you were going to try to rhyme I, something I, there. I was that almost rhyming. Gone. I was almost rhyming. Horribly wrong. Um, so to I'm, I'm going to give that to you. That's fine. Thanks. Well done, Phil. Damn. <sighs> okay. Make up a rap about Easter. Easter, Easter, it's the best. I love chocolate nests. What? (laughs) That was good. That was good. Word. Do I get a ding for that? You get a big ding. I get a a big ding for that one. Okay, Phil. Name the five ingredients that went into our extreme Easter nests that we made the other day. Shredded wheat, white chocolate, dark chocolate, milk chocolate, and golden syrup. Damn. That was that was. I, I could just get into a hammock right now. I've got so much time. <laughs> Don't be okay. Right, oh, Dan. Competitive. Okay. <sighs> Tell three lies. <laughs> 
Go. Uh, I have blonde hair. I remember how to do this radio really well, and Phil sounds great today with his voice. <laughs> Okay, they were lies. They were all lies. I, they, they I mean, I, true, true I, lies. I think I do sound great today. That's an opinion. How are you going to judge that? I that's that's just up to you. I'm going to I'm going to ding that for myself. This is tense. Have we survived We've this long? We've not survived okay. this long before. Oh. <sighs> Prepare yourself. I'm, for I'm this ready. One, I'm ready. Okay. I'm ready. What four colors make orange and turquoise? What? Uh, orange is made out of yellow and red. Turquoise is green and blue. <laughs> Yes! I thought that would break your head! Oh. That felt good. Okay, yep. Dan. Yep. <laughs> Name five movies. <laughs> uh, Titanic, Deep Impact, Armageddon, Babe, Pig in the Big City, and Spider Man. Wow! That was insane. That was a very specific and diverse <laughs> choice of movies, and I don't know where they where came from. Where did they from? come from? I love that okay. Babe 2, Pig in the City is in your head. <laughs> of all the Keep movies. Keep it going, Phil. Spell rabbit backwards. Oh, no. T I. B B A R. No, it is not T I. It is. Oh, wait. T I B B. Wait, wait. I've got to. No! no! Oh, again. Are you kidding me? Okay, okay. For God's I got it. <sighs> okay, okay, right, fine. Uh, okay, Phil, hit me. Dan. <laughs> You're going to be watching on the website for this one. Uh, oh. Do the Macarena. Uh, well, number two, number three, number three. Uh, what's it? To, I'm not helping you. Uh, one, two. Oh, oh no. no. Okay. Oh. Yes! That's it. He failed. That wasn't even half a Macarena. That was a qu like a quarter. It was an M. Um, it was Congratulations, um, Phil. You are this um, week's winner of the seven second challenge. Oh, it feels good. I never win anything, so, so I get really competitive. What, yeah, with apart this. from this all the time, <laughs> what song would you like to play on the radio for everybody, Phil? Uh, something that is a blast from the past. Okay. You're going to be singing along to this in your cars. Mm -hmm. Your grandma's going to be jamming. It's the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Okay, I'm quite happy you won. Well done, Phil.
Congrats, Phil. Thanks. The winner of this week's 7 Second Challenge. I enjoyed that. And everybody, I hope you enjoyed the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. <sighs> this is BBC Radio 1. Am I ever gonna win? I, I hope not. I need to. I, I think I'm. I'm making them too fun for you. I need yeah. to just. The next one. It's not gonna be sportsman-like people. I'm just gonna be like, count to a billion. <laughs> go, Phil. Go. So your voice. How's My that voice, holding up? It's, it's it's pretty good. It's not hurting me at all. I just sound really husky. It's and not hurting you at all. Sexual. <laughs> Yeah, of course. Um, so I thought it would be quite funny to see if we could make you sound normal. Okay. A bit of pitch shifting. Oh, no. So I've been playing with the very complicated kind of like NASA-esque desk in front of me. It's probably going to go horribly wrong. So, uh, Phil... You're going to break the radio. I'm don't press them. probably going to break the radio. Let's be real. Okay, so, Phil, why don't you do a bit of talking for us? Hello. I'm doing a bit of... You can't hear anything. You need to put my mic. Hello? <laughs> Okay, okay, yeah, Phil. Go, go, say a sentence to everybody. Hello, Hi. this is Phil, and I am talking on the radio. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to be like, I think I slightly overestimated that one. Just, just, just give us a bit more, it's quite sensual. Okay, I'm going to do my deepest voice. Hello, this is Phil's deepest voice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's that's really strange. I don't think I like that at all. I really regret it. Actually, why don't you read out some new holiday mascot tweets while doing that? Yeah, go, go, go read, read out a couple. Okay, okay, we have one from Lauren who said, A parrot that pecks people's eyes if they don't speak like a pirate on International Pirate Day. That... <laughs> I sound like a child. <laughs> What? This is horrible. I, I, I quite like it. Quite I want much. my real voice back. No, that's getting a good suggestion there, Lauren. We've got another one from Lucy. What's that, Phil? Uh, Morgan Freeman for my birthday so I can listen to him narrate my entire life story. <laughs> Why do I sound it's, like an eight-year-old child? It's providing you with some kind of weird emotional inflection. <laughs> that you, this is just not even it's in your so register weird. right now. Okay, I mean, we've got one last one. I just want to milk this joke while I can. And a gorilla so that Phil keeps his deep voice. A gorilla so that you keep your deep voice. Yeah. Okay, that's quite wonderful. So, Phil, uh, I, I hope you get well soon. Thanks. You can't just leave me in the ditch forever with this radio show. <laughs> you was totally trying to cop out earlier. You don't realise, by the way. It was like, oh, I, I feel can't so do Ill. it, Dan. You're going to have to just do it by yourself. And I'm like, you're not actually sick in any way. You're just <laughs> waiting for an excuse. So... There we go. Yeah. I'm really sad that I haven't got to play my thing. But let, let's talk about new Muse, Phil. Yeah, the new the song happened. is out. Like I'm actually starting to like it more than I did. Oh, you know? really? Yeah. Okay. So I introduce Muse. I think you should introduce Muse in your special way. Oh, no, no, I just got my voice back. Okay. No, no, you can do it for us. Go on. Uh, okay. okay, here is Muse's new song, <laughs> Dead Inside, on BBC Radio 1. <laughs> oh, no. So that was Muse with Dead Inside. Dan and Phil on BBC Radio 1. We have some final holiday mascots. You're trying so hard to keep it all I'm coming out. I'm aren't trying you? to keep it together. <laughs> Thank you for everybody contributing to Phil's wonderful new holiday mascot idea. I'd like to see several of these introduced into society. So we're just going to give you some final ones. Tamsin said a cardboard box that you can hide in during awkward family gatherings. <laughs> the awkward family gathering box. So just arrive at your doorstep. Yep. Jenna said a walking placenta for New Year's to celebrate uh. the birth of another New Year. No, that's, that's not being a mascot. <laughs> that was a stretch that you did didn't need to take and Alexa said <laughs> a a wow that's quite horrifying a man-sized Nutella jar that smears Nutella over your body on International Nutella Day that sounds a bit invasive that sounds a lot worse than the creepy old Easter bunnies but de delicious at the same time but delicious at the same uh, time Lion Onesie said a llama that spits glitter all over your mum on Mother's Day <laughs> <laughs> There's bits glitter all over your mum. That's would, quite specific. Would your mum appreciate that? I, I'm sure she probably would. Yeah, I'm sure she'd like that. Yeah. So thank you very much for listening to us tonight. Phil won't sound like a Sith Lord next time you tune in. I Although, hope not. coincidentally, it is May the 4th during our next show. It's our Star Wars so special. You should keep it and sound like a Sith Lord. Yeah. That'd be quite fun. I'll, I'll keep it. <laughs> It'll be seasonal. Deb is up next, and now is a track from MIA's album, her first one, which is now 10 years old. It's a very good song. This is MIA with Galang on Radio 1.